everybody. Over the past six months, I've been testing the ZWO ASI 2600 MC Pro. And this is a color camera with an APS-C size sensor. And in this video, I'm gonna give you my feedback on the camera with the understanding that everybody else has already done this probably six months ago or even longer. But I thought I'd give you my feedback and hopefully I can help some of you out if you've been thinking about buying this camera. The first thing we should talk about is the overall size difference and design difference of this camera because if you use pretty much any other ASI camera, it's quite a bit different. The first thing I noticed when I opened up this camera is that it doesn't have the raised threads right here, which pretty much every other ASI camera has, at least the smaller censored ones. And so that can be a bit confusing because you might think you don't have the right adapters anymore. But it should come with the two adapters you need right in the box to get that 55 millimeter back focus. And as you can see here, it should just screw right into your telescope as normal. So while it might seem intimidating at first, it's really not much different. Another thing that sets this camera apart from, let's say the 1600 or the 294 or even the 533 is that it's considerably larger and heavier. So if you are trying to go with a lightweight portable setup, this is still obviously very small, but I should note that it is quite a bit bigger than the others. And on that note, it does have the standard DC 12 volt power port right here, but you need to make sure you always have that connected to some sort of external battery or even the ASI Air, just to make sure this has enough power to be able to take its own photos. So if you don't have that power cable plugged in, there's a good chance the camera's not even gonna work properly. So you'll need to connect a USB 3.0 and the power cable, just so we're clear on that. Another new feature that I noticed in this particular camera is if you go into your ASI Air settings, there's an anti-do feature which you can turn on or off. And that can be helpful for those of us that are shooting in a more humid environment. It'll just make sure that sensor stays nice and clean throughout the night. And just like virtually every other cooled camera from ZWO, this can go down to about minus 20 degrees Celsius, which will really cut down on the grain in your photos at night. Now that we've covered the basics of the camera, let's take a look at the specs, because that's obviously the most important part. If we head over to ZWO's website, we can see again that this has an APS size C sensor, similar to a DSLR in some respects, and it has about 26 megapixels. And this can be a good thing or potentially a bad thing depending on your shooting scenario, and we'll get to this more in a minute. But if you're just a normal DSLR shooter, then you should be used to about 26 megapixels. I know the camera I'm recording with the Nikon D780 has 24, and so that's pretty standard resolution. However, there are other cameras from ZWO that go up as high as 50 or 60 megapixels or more. And we'll talk about why I don't really recommend going down that route here in a few minutes. The pixel size of the camera is 3.76, that's fairly standard. And I'm not gonna get into all the other technical details because everybody else does that better than me, so I might as well just skim over those. One thing I do wanna touch on though, because this is very important, is the gain that you're gonna be using with this camera. Because one of the problems I've seen with this model in particular is that if you don't use the right gain, you may see severe sensor problems in your final photo. So if we look at this chart on the website, we can see the graph here and basically what it's telling us is that once you put the gain to at least a value of 100, you should be in good shape. Anything less than 100 is almost like a different sensitivity. I hate to use that word because there's a lot of misinformation regarding it, but let's just think of it like that for right now. So if we go with that analogy, there's basically two sensitivities for this camera, which is very similar to a lot of the other ZWO cameras. So 99 to zero on your gain, that's gonna be a low sensitivity. And then anything above 100 is gonna be like a high sensitivity. And again, my point here is that for the best results from this camera, you wanna put it to a gain of at least 100. And most people just say, put it directly on 100 and you're all set. For those that might be using a gain of 50 or even zero, then watch out because you might see photos like this out of the camera. And this is true of a lot of the ZWO cameras, but I noticed it in particular with the 2600. Okay, so I'm glad we covered that. Now what I wanna do is talk about how I'm gonna be using this camera. Because originally I was gonna do a review on this a couple months ago, and the review was kinda of negative just because I was using a RedCat 51, that's the only telescope I had. And the issue I had was just that with this camera, with the APS-C sensor size, I had a 1.5 times crop effectively. So if I take my 250 millimeter RedCat, multiply that by 1.5, I'm really bad at math, so let's just say that's around 360 or something. I'll have it here on the screen, the, the final number. 
But at that folk length, around 350, 360, you're still a bit wide for most deep space objects, and they don't fill the frame as nicely as they should. And for that reason in particular, I wasn't a big fan of this camera. Again, just due to my telescope, really. But now that I'm using the Ascar V, that has so many different configurations that pair perfectly with this camera. And that's gonna be one of the main points I'm focusing on in this video because that's probably the most important as far as I'm concerned. You know, when you're buying a new camera or a new telescope, you always have to compare the two and see what's gonna work best. Because ideally, you want your field of view and your focal length to be around four to 600 millimeters for a lot of the larger objects like Andromeda, Orion, Pleiades, you know, your standard stuff. And then for the really small stuff like Iris and the Whirlpool Galaxy, the Thor's helmet, etc., for that, you're gonna want at least a thousand millimeters, if not 2,000. And for this reason, I generally prefer the smaller sensors like one inch or micro four thirds. That gives you more magnification with any telescope. But bringing this back to the ASI 2600 and the ASCAR-V, which I'm currently using together, it's a dream setup because I can install a two inch narrowband filter into the back of the telescope. That allows me to cut through all the light pollution here at the new house and still get an amazing photo. And it really is a very easy setup because without the monochrome sensor and the filter wheel, I pretty much focus once at the start of the night. I'll check it every so often because there's a chance that as the temperature cools down, the focus will shift, but it does make things easier because I'm not constantly swapping filters throughout the night. So in that regard, if you are trying to decide between mono and color camera, obviously the color camera like the 2600 is gonna be easier to use and it's gonna save you money because you don't have to buy a bunch of filters and a filter wheel. Well, let's talk about the price next. The ASI 2600 retails for about $1,800. And obviously that's up to you to decide if it's worth the money or not. Now from my perspective, I've been advocating a lot of people get the ASI 533 color camera. That's kind of like a more entry level in some ways camera. It's nine megapixels, it's a one inch square sensor and it only costs 800 bucks. And from that point of view, you can say, okay, I can get the 533 color camera. I get nine megapixels, which is gonna seem low at first, but if you start to play around with it, you realize it's actually not too bad at all. And then the one inch sensor is gonna magnify your focal length effectively by a value of 2.7. In other words, you can get away with a smaller telescope and still have quite a, amount, a nice amount of zoom. And the question becomes, okay, if I can get that camera for 800, why would I spend a thousand dollars more? Well, with the 2600, you're getting the APS-C size sensor. So you have a wider field of view. You're gonna have a higher resolution camera, about 26 megapixels. But beyond that, there's really not that much of a difference between the two cameras, at least in terms of how your final image is gonna look. For me personally, I think the biggest difference would be the small square crop versus the more traditional rectangular crop. And speaking of price, let me just give you my own feedback. You know, I've got the option of either buying this camera when I'm done testing it or sending it back to ZWO, which is kind of their standard way of doing things nowadays for most of these Astro companies. And my idea is, okay, I've got a 533 monochrome camera, I've got a 294 color camera, and then I have the older 1600 monochrome camera. So I really only have one camera, which is the 294. That camera works fine, but the big problem it has is amp glow. That means you're gonna have a really bright light in all of your photos. Now granted, you can fix that amp glow very easily just by taking dark frames. And because these dedicated astro cameras have a cooling system, the dark frames are very easy to do. I can even take them in this room later tonight if I had to. So dark frames are really not a problem. They're not really gonna add that much more time to your stack. And therefore you could argue that the amp glow is not a concern whatsoever. What I would say though is that means more work and more processing time and just more organization that I don't want to have to deal with. So if I get the 2600 MC Pro, not only am I going to have a slightly bigger sensor, which should be a little bit better in low light, but I'm also going to have zero amp glow. And we can actually take a look at some sample images here to see the amp glow on a few different cameras. And my point here is just that, let's say you don't take dark frames for whatever reason. Well, now you don't really have to worry about it because your photos are gonna look great straight out of the camera. And I should mention that this photo right here that I recently took from the backyard, which I'll talk about in a separate video, this photo was created just by stacking some light frames together. I didn't take any flats, darks, or bias, and the image still looks great. And that's my point, is that if I can get a camera like the 2600 
that works so well I don't even need to think about bias and dark frames. That sounds like a good idea to me. Although I realize everybody's gonna tell you take darks and bias, I understand, or at least take dark frames. But still, I'm lazy. Most of the time I don't bother. That's just for me though. Getting back to my original train of thought here, maybe in your case you're looking to get your first color camera. If so, I think this is a great choice because it's gonna do everything you need it to Provided you have at least, I would say, 350 millimeters on your telescope. If so, I don't see any reason why you wouldn't want to get this camera other than the price. The final thing I want to talk about today is my realistic experience with this camera. Because I've been using it, like I said, for about six months now. And the one thing that always stands out to me every time I go to edit my photos is just how large and hard to process the RAW files are. Every single FIT file from this camera is going to be at 50 megabytes. That's pretty standard, again, if you're used to using a full-frame DSLR. But coming from my little 533, this is quite a jump up in terms of the resolution and the file size. That means my ASI Air Mini, which I've been using, is going to fill up a lot faster. Now, I'm usually offloading the photos every night anyway, but maybe I'm going on a trip somewhere and there's a chance that I can't back them up for whatever reason. This could be a problem. If I run out of file space, on the ASI or Mini, then I have to start getting creative, which it's easy enough to work around, but my point here is that these files do take up quite a bit more space. And to make matters worse, on my laptop, if I was stacking these photos in Pixinsight, it took over two and a half hours for everything to stack through. And that's without even having darks, flats, or bias included. Granted, that was on my Intel laptop. When I stacked it again on my gaming PC, which has an NVIDIA 3080, a good Intel CPU, a solid state drive, etc. It still took over an hour to stack my photos in Pixinsight. Now, if I was using ASI Studio or Deep Sky Stack or something else to stack, it, it wouldn't have taken nearly as long. But again, the whole point here is that these files are very large, they take up a lot of space, and they can be intensive to process. And another thing I noticed is that when I was finished stacking, the directory was over 60 gigabytes for one photo, ultimately. This can be a problem if you're like me and you're constantly running low on space on your laptop or your computer. I can't afford to have 60 gigs for a single photo. Now granted, you can delete most of those files anyway and have maybe only a few gigs worth of stuff like your TIFFs, your final stacked image, etc. But it's worth understanding that this could quickly fill up your computer if you're gonna be doing a lot of shooting with this camera. And again, if you don't have an NVIDIA GPU and you're trying to do some of the more advanced processing, it can really slow things down because these files are so high res. They're not 50 megapixels, they're only 26, but that's still plenty of resolution to slow things down. And that's really the only problem I noticed with the camera, is just that this stuff takes forever, it's hard to process. Unless I'm using my powerful gaming PC, even that it still takes quite a bit of work. All right, and that's all I've got for you today. We took a look at the ASI 2600MC Pro, and as you saw, it's a great camera if you're looking for an APS size C sensor with 26 megapixels and a color sensor at that. There's really no drawbacks besides the price at 1800 bucks, which might not be a problem for you. And the only other drawback was just that the files are fairly large and they're a bit difficult to process. So for those that don't have the best computer or if you're running low on space, that's definitely worth considering. As for me personally, I'm still debating if this is going to be a replacement for the 294 or if I'm just going to stick with that camera and save the money. It's hard to say right now. I'm tempted to lean towards buying this camera because I know my girlfriend will use it so maybe she'll go halfway with me on it but uh, either way this is a great choice if you're looking for a good color camera just make sure you compare it with your telescope and make sure that the field of view is going to be what you want because I think that's going to be one of the main considerations is that you're able to fill the frame nicely with whatever it is you want to photograph so if you want to learn more about that check out some of my other videos here on YouTube where I show you telescopius.com etc and that will get into more of those details. But that's all I've got for you today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in another video.